Hello students and welcome back to my channel. This is the Nutrition and Toxicology series of videos and today we're going to continue by taking a look at the heavy metals. So expect to learn what are the toxic heavy metals and which ones are essential but we need them in very low quantities as they have an hormetic effect. Hi, I'm Tommy. I'm a human nutrition student and researcher at the university. What I do in this type of videos is to synthesize my classes so then I can explain and teach you the best and most valuable information you need to know. Okay, so let's begin this video by taking a look at the toxic heavy metals. So heavy metals, the definition is an atomic weight greater than 4.5 grams per centimeter cubic. And the toxicity is relative to the dose, always. We differentiate particularly toxic, such as mercury, lead and cadmium, and essential, which are copper, zinc and iron, for example. They share a very interesting property, which is that they are thiol primes and they block the thiol groups. This means that they interact with enzymes, for example. Let's start with mercury. The elemental mercury and the alkyl mercury. The elemental one is non-toxic and is not absorbed through the gastrointestinal tract, whereas the alkyl mercury, the known methyl mercury, accumulates in the central nervous system and the seafood is the main source of alkyl mercury. Mercury attacks the central nervous system especially the cerebellum, creating problems in coordination. The sources can be natural, agricultural or industrial. The marine environment is the one that has the methyl mercury, which is the one that is more toxic for us. The inhaled mercury, elemental mercury, goes to the brain and creates delirium, such as in mud hatters. The inorganic mercury salts are absorbed via gastrointestinal only in a 10%, they are accumulated in the kidneys and they are excreted through the urine. The organic mercury, the methyl mercury, is absorbed almost all through the gastrointestinal tract. It goes to the brain, it passes the blood-brain barrier and it is eliminated by the feces and this created the Minamata disease. The sources are mainly the fish, then the dental amalgams, then water and air. Normal values of mercury are 5 micrograms per kilogram in blood and the mercury limit in fish is 1 milligram per kilogram. Then we have lead. We have a decreased environmental presence because it was very very high during the war in 1930 because of the leaded gasoline, the petrol and the firearms. There is an agriculture, natural and industrial sources of lead and the intoxication of it causes the Saturnism. The roots are through inhalation, oral but also skin. This is only with the organic compounds though. And the accumulation in the bone creates a displacement of the calcium and makes the bone more fragile. The majority of the excretion is in the feces because it's not absorbed. Then in the urine and also in the saliva and it creates the bottom line here in the teeth. It inhibits the alanine synthetase and the alanine dehydrogenase which are enzymes that are correlated with the hemoglobin. So it basically creates an anemia and other effects are gastrointestinal, hematopoietic, as I said, neurological, renal, oral, endocrine and also teratogenic. So as you can see the Saturnism is a very bad condition and the intoxication is usually chronic, not acute. So bit by bit during a prolonged time. And then we have cadmium. Cadmium is accumulative, is resistant and it suffers a metallothionine combination. The sources are natural cadmium zinc antagonists, these are present in nature, cadmium and zinc are often associated, agricultural in rice and wheat, very important, and industrial with bad grade engravings. The main source is the diet followed by work and then smoking of course. We have an intestinal absorption of 3 to 8 percent and inhalation absorption of 10 to 50 percent. As you can see tobacco is very bad distribution to the liver with uh, the metallothionine. So basically it binds to the metallothionine and it goes to the liver and then you will see to the kidneys. Elimination, the ones that are not absorbed are excreted in the feces and the others through the kidneys. So what it happens is that the metallothionine together with the cadmium, they bind together, they go to the kidney, to the nephron, then they separate, there is free cadmium there in the kidney and it creates a renal damage, a renal failure. It creates uh, indeed high blood pressure because of that renal failure. And this was the 
Itaitai disease in Japan, and it was related with a low consumption of iron, low vitamin D, low proteins in the diet, and a lot of rice, contaminated of course with cadmium, and it created osteomalacia, proteinuria, and bone problems in women especially. Cadmium bioavailability from the soil, which indeed goes to the rice and wheat because they are plants. We talked about cadmium as well in the last video for the deers that are more susceptible to the cadmium because they eat a lot of plants. And the cadmium can also replace the calcium in the hydroxyapatite. This will create a joint problem together with a calcium deficiency. Moving on, we have the arsenic. This is a metalloid. And uh, we have to mention the water arsenicism in India and Germany. These are parts of the world where there is a higher concentration of arsenic in the drinking water. Environmental levels are from 2 to 5 milligrams per kilogram. And during eruptions of uh, volcanoes, for example, you can also reach uh, levels of 20 milligrams per kilogram. As you can see, it's like 4 to 5 times the normal amount. Well, arsenic is a carcinogen. It's a confirmed human carcinogen category 1. So as you can see, it's very bad. And the trivalent form is more toxic than the pentavalent. And the inorganic is more toxic than the organic. Therefore, the trivalent inorganic is the most toxic form. Fortunately enough, the absorption is inversely proportional to the toxicity. So the trivalent inorganic is the one that absorbs the worst. The sources are the drug exposure, drinking water, the fish, meat additives and grapes uh, fungicides. The dietary intake is 0.3 milligrams a day and the weekly one is considering 2.1 micrograms uh, per day. It comes from meat, fish, cereals, fats and oil and also of course drinking water from those water asceticism areas. Absorption orally 95% and uh, through inhalation 25 to 40. As you can see oral is the main one. Distribution soft organs then hair, nails, teeth and skin. The elimination through the kidneys, gastrointestinal, but also hair and nails. And the elimination is better when it's methylated. The biotransformations of uh, file groups. It is a file prime, so it will block an enzyme. There is an enzymatic block of the DNA polymerase. And the dosification is done with uh, glutathione because it, it is able to methylate and add phosphates to the arsenic, so therefore it has the methylated form and is easier to eliminate. The acute poisoning is coliform uh, gastrointestinal symptoms, whereas the chronic poisoning, which is the most uh, dangerous one, is a multisystemic involving multiple organs. Then we have tin. Tin is soft and is present together with other metals, and it has a, an anthropogenic influence. The uses as additives, food, soaps, Perfumes, dyes, packaging, and even deodorants may contain tin. The food exposure, higher in canned food, pesticides, additives, and in animal foods. So, as it is present in a lot of things, measures have now been taken. And uh, we find out that the absorption is poor orally and is more problematic parentally. That's why we say that nowadays it's not a problem of food safety. It is a heavy metal, so it has a file prime action, and the same as in mercury, lead, and cadmium. It will block uh, an enzyme. It binds to the file compounds inhibiting enzyme. Then we have aluminium. The aluminium is a non-essential nutrient, and it has an affinity for oxygen. Higher acidity will lead to a higher environmental risk with aluminium, because it reacts in acidic conditions, making it dangerous. The sources can be water, tea, herbs, spices, additives, containers, and medicines, drugs. The daily contribution is estimated to be 88 milligrams per person per day. Fortunately enough, it has a very low gastrointestinal absorption, and it binds to phosphates and goes into the feces. The absorption pulmonary is limited, and the problem only occurs where it is parentally. The deposition is in bones, and organs, especially the brain. And the excretion is uh, when taken orally through the intestinal phosphates, so through the feces. The neurotoxicity, they discovered it with the parenteral aluminium gels that they were giving to the dialytic dementia people. So they found out that it affects the nerve endings in the brain. 
causing dementia and possibly Alzheimer and Parkinson's because it interferes with the synaptic impulses. Moving on, we have the essential heavy metals. These have a known function in the body. The toxicity here is also dose based. And here we have to take into account the concept of hormetic substances. Copper, it's an enzyme exchanger. It's very interesting, this element. The exposure, dietary, occupational, organs, oysters, chocolate, and water. The absorption, mainly through inhalation. Orally, only a 30% and is very low due to the index of other metals such as iron, molybdenum and zinc. It interferes with them. The distribution, organs and muscles, where the enzymes are present basically. And the elimination, biliary mainly and also renal in a 1%. Toxicodynamics, it's a file prime. So it will bind to the file groups, creating a glutathione depletion. Toxicity will give us an anemia, neutropenia and bone demineralization. Acute toxicity has emetic and laxative properties, and when it is severe, it includes tachycardia and hypertension. And chronic toxicity, it has to do with liver cirrhosis and jaundice. Here we have to differentiate the Menkes disease, which is genetic, and it has to do with a deficiency of copper due to a low placental transport. And the Wilson's disease, which is the reverse, is genetic, of course, but it has to do with a lot of copper in the body due to a low elimination and there is an onset at age 5 more or less. And then we have iron. It has to do with hemoglobin and cytochromes because it's involved in the redox reactions, the reduction and oxidation. The supplementation of iron is not needed with a variety diet. Its exposure is mainly dietary, then medicines and packaging. The absorption, 10% from the diet, mainly orally but also through inhalation. The distribution is in with ferritin and it goes to the liver mainly but also to other organs and the elimination through the feces and urine toxicodynamics the toxicity vomiting ulcers shock acidosis hemosiderosis and hemochromatosis and the deficiency well an anemia and then zinc it's an abundant micro element it acts as a cofactor it's an enzyme constitutive the food sources, oysters, livers, yeasts, meat, fish and pulses. The absorption, gastrointestinal, 20 to 30%. Its absorption is influenced by competitors, such as other metals and enhancers, such as sugars and amino acids. The distribution, carbonic anhydrase in blood and methylothionines in tissues. And the elimination, gastrointestinal mainly, so through the feces and then also urine. Toxicodynamics. It has an affinity to the files and uh, hydroxyl groups. Indeed, it's a file prime. It interacts with metals such as copper and iron, lowering their levels. The deficiency is associated with a decreased growth, hypogonadism, raw and dry skin, whereas the excess can lead to hypochromic anemia, venous ulcers, central nervous system depression, and the teratogenic activity. And there is an enhanced toxicity when there is a lot of copper and a lot of nickel present. And then we have chromium. So the trivalent form is essential, but the exavalent is toxic. The sources. The main one is the brewer's yeast, but also vegetable fats, oils, cereals and nuts. The absorption is very low with inhalation and orally less than 1% is increased by vitamin B1, B2 and B3. Distribution. Chromium-6 passes the membranes, accumulates in bone, spleen and testicles. Biotransformation. The trivalent form is created in the tissues. So basically, if you absorb chromium-6, which is toxic, is then going to be converted into chromium-3. And the elimination is through the urine and the feces. Toxicodynamics, it converts acetate to CO2, cholesterol and fatty acids. It increases the insulin action and the glucose utilization. And it reacts with nucleotides inhibiting respiration and therefore increasing the lipid peroxidation. The deficiency will lead to a cardiovascular problem, insulin resistance and an impaired amino acid metabolism. Acute poisoning will give us gastrointestinal symptoms, acute renal failure and possible liver failure and chronic intoxication, which is the most dangerous one, renal tubular necrosis, hepatocellular necrosis, ulceration, gastritis, as well as a higher incidence of lung cancer. Moving on, we have cobalt. This is a natural element as well. 
it's an essential part of vitamin B12, the cobalamin. The source is industrial food, vitamin B12, meat, and dairy products. Absorption is low inhalation, orally at 30%, as a cobalt chloride, and only a 0.5% as a cobalt oxide. The distribution is through the liver, kidney, and heart, and the metabolism to possible more toxic compounds, such as cyanide iron. And the elimination, renal, fecal, and also biliary. Toxicodynamics, again, it's a heavy metal. File prime, high avidity for file groups. It inhibits cellular respiration, energy availability in the myocardium and in the nervous tissue. Acute poisoning will give us a diarrhea, a paralysis, and an hemorrhage. And uh, chronic intoxication, local symptoms of pneumoconiosis, allergic dermatitis, and systemic alterations. And then last but not least, we have manganese. It's the least toxic essential metal. It's a component of connective and bone tissue. It's an enzyme cofactor. The sources are various, from petrol and tignoc agent, dietary intake is from nuts and seeds, and the recommended intake is from 2 to 5 milligrams a day. The absorption, orally, 1 to 3.5%, slow when inhalated, and the dermal one is minimal. The distribution with transferrin and alpha macroglobulin. The biotransformation is from divalent to trivalent, and the elimination, mainly gastrointestinal. Toxicodynamics, it promotes formation of kinons, free radicals, and it inhibits the ATPase. The acute toxicity has to do with metal fume fever, whereas the chronic one is a pneumonitis, manganism, neurotoxic symptoms similar to Parkinsonism. Okay, this is it for this video. I hope you understood everything I said. If you didn't, there is a comment section down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you get notified every time I upload a new video. If you find value in this, please share it to your friends and family to spread this knowledge to them as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one, in which we're going to talk about the fluoride, the radionucleotides, as well as the radiation in the food, and the endocrine disruptors. I will see you there. Hope you enjoyed. Ciao.